Greetings folks and welcome to Bob of All Trades. I'm really excited because this video is going to feature my very first review from a company called ZTech PC. For more information about them, check the description. Essentially this company is just going to allow me to spec out any laptop that they have in stock that I see fit. They'll send it to me, I'll review it, and then I'll send it back. It's a really nice relationship and it is literally just that simple. But because this company is an enthusiast run company, I'm pretty excited to be able to not only feature their laptops, but really break them down and see what they're made of and perhaps see what kind of benefits that they have to the customer. So just take that as it is, and this is my very first review of one of their product offerings from Clevo. Let's proceed. Here we have a 15.6 inch Clevo based chassis sold through ZTech PC. Now this is a 4.6 pound chassis and has an aluminum lid. All of the other panels are plastic. Now, the lid has some perforated holes that let the display's backlight shine through. Now, if you're not feeling the ZTech PC logo, this is just a sticker. Upon ordering, should you wish to just have it removed altogether, you can, and it will look like this. This is a sweet, just stealthed out silver look. I'm digging it. Now, the chassis at its thickest point is about an inch and a quarter thick. And for the port selection, you've got a USB 3 mini display port, and a full-size card reader. Now this is a UHS-1 card reader, so not the fastest out there. It will insert itself all the way into the chassis and is spring-loaded for eject. We also have some exhaust over on the right-hand side. And on the rear, we have more exhaust, a USB-C that will do display port, an HDMI local area network, and the barrel power plug. That barrel power port does support the uh, included 180-watt power supply unit, pretty physically small in size. Now over here it would look like there would be some exhaust, but this is just for aesthetics. The battery is here, not real exhaust. Over on the left hand side, you do have real exhaust, a lock, a USB, USB 2, and the separate microphone and headphone jack. Now everything inside I will lay the specs right down here for you. We have the 10th generation Intel 8 core i7, the 10875H and the RTX 2060. Now we have a four point mounting solution over the die for good core uniformity. I do appreciate this, so job well done, Clevo. The CPU can be undervolted with throttle stop and I was able to achieve a negative 80 millivolt undervolt, which improves Cinebench R20 scores and will increase the clock speed under load. There's two memory dim slots in total. Now I opted for the upgraded 3200 megahertz dim and it will recognize this. There's no BIOS tuning for memory. The factory spec will be 2933. We have two memory DIMMs here, so feel free to upgrade this as you see fit. It's accessible, upgradable, much appreciated. Now the battery inside here is a 48 watt hour hot swappable unit. So when the lid is on here, you'll be able to pop this out. Honestly, the 48 watt hour battery is good for around three hours of runtime unplugged, not including gaming. Give or take 30 minutes, depending on what you're doing. Your use may vary depending on if you're pinging the Wi Fi, downloading a bunch of stuff, the brightness is all the way up. Just three hours on average, not including gaming. Now, for storage, we have two M.2 slots. The included screw will come in the box, and we have a two and a half inch drive. The network interface card is the AX201 Wi-Fi 6, and with all of the ports allowing multiple monitors, the 8-core CPU, triple storage solution, this might make for a nice mobile workstation, just for example. Now with the battery located in the back, one hand opening isn't quite there. A laptop does come to life quickly, but there is no Windows Hello. Now the Windows Precision touchpad is plastic, but it's very smooth. We have dedicated buttons with a short travel but satisfying click. All in all, not a bad solution, and this does not rattle, which is spectacular. The island-style keyboard has a good bit of travel. It has a single-zone RGB, but it is bright with about 12 colors to choose from, including white. The function key 1 will allow you to max out your fans. That's 50 decibels right there. The function key N3 will allow you to switch between the performance profile, entertainment, power saving, and quiet. I highly recommend quiet for any kind of office work, just anything other than gaming or video editing, as the fans tend to ramp up and will be quite obnoxious. Otherwise, consistent quiet acoustics on the quiet profile for this particular model. 
Now the keyboard deck is plastic, but it has a brushed aluminum look over a month in with this laptop and it hardly leaves any fingerprints and it doesn't get obnoxiously hot during long gaming sessions. Anything under 50 degrees Celsius is a must. Anything under 40 degrees Celsius to the touch is amazing. Now speaker audio is just average at best. It'll pass the latency mon with a five minute run but fails around the 20 minute mark. Just have a listen to the audio for yourself. The display is excellent. Full HD, IPS, 144Hz, 98% standard RGB, should come in at around 350 nits, there's no PWM flicker, and it has 8 milliseconds of response time. Now how about that webcam and microphone? Alright, so that 720p webcam and microphone located at the top of the bezel. We are doing this unplug from the power supply unit, and for evidence, I am walking around my house. So I can't be any more honest than that. I'm not tripping over any cords. There's nothing here behind me except my home. Now, keyboard strokes. Not too bad. What about maximum fans? So we'll walk around. This is maximum fans. This is what I look and sound like. Overall, this is a very usable solution, and I do appreciate that. But what about thermal performance? Let's move on to that next. Thermal performance. Under the performance profile, allowing the CPU and GPU to pull maximum power, you'll see the CPU reach up to 100 degrees Celsius and the GPU in the mid 80s. While the keyboard temps and overall functionality of the laptop isn't compromised, this isn't going to be ideal for some. Now, to improve thermal performance overall, you have a few options. Option one is to use the entertainment profile that lowers the wattage of the CPU and GPU by 10 watts each. This will typically decrease temperatures on both CPU and GPU somewhere around 5 to 10 degrees Celsius depending on the title, ambient temperature, and fan profile. Then we have option two. I like to use throttle stop and lower the power limits on this CPU to 30 watts. This will yield amazing temps and fan acoustics under 50 decibels should you wish. With these settings, you can see the temperature difference between a 90 watt 2060 and an 80 watt 2060 and how that affects temperatures on the CPU as heat transfers. Regardless, this option too can provide amazing temperatures on any system, not just this particular laptop. These are just the settings that I have chosen after six weeks of playtime on these chassis. Of course, there's more than two ways to skin a cat, but these two options are a good baseline to showcase for this laptop in today's review. Now, when comparing stock thermal paste versus Phobia Nano Grease under maximum load, you won't see the improvement. Once we tame the wattage, it's here where we can see the single-digit improvement of the higher quality thermal interface material. Trigger warning here, I'm about to show static gameplay between the Ryzen 7 4800H and this Intel 8-core i7, both using a 90-watt RTX 2060. In some titles, map locations, and scenarios, you will get better GPU saturation on the Intel platform. I monitored individual CPU cores in an attempt to isolate the bottleneck, but I didn't have any luck finding anything obvious to share. It seems that in some circumstances, the Intel platform offers better gaming performance. Now this was fun for me, since I just happen to have two equally matched systems to test back and forth, so I wanted to share these findings here. This should be taken as an additional consideration when investing into your next gaming laptop, but not the be-all deciding factor is this won't be the case across most titles. By no means am I trying to convince you that Intel is better suited for gaming. I don't have a horse in this race. This is just fun information that I would want shared with me, so I'm passing this over to you. Enjoy. All right, folks, let's wrap it up. Shout out to ZTech PC. You guys sent me two identical laptops. One had Phobia Nano Grease, the other had stock thermal interface material. Not very many manufacturers are willing to do that, let alone let me spec out the device as I see fit. So shout out to you. Thank you very much as a reviewer. Those options are few and far between. Now, what about the laptop? If this had amazing thermal performance, then I think everybody would just love this device because at that point you're looking at a small battery for its shortcomings, but then you have the other side of the fence stating, well, it has 
three different storage solutions and a 4.6 pound 15.6 inch chassis. That's going to be very appealing to many people out there. It also has a very nice display at 350 nits, high sRGB, 144 hertz, very nice webcam, does not get hot to the touch, Windows Precision drivers. The list goes on as far as the niceties and real world usage for the money until you break it down and dip into that thermal performance. Once you start monitoring that, ooh, man, that's hot, right? 100 degrees Celsius, nobody wants to see that. And while we are able to cure that with throttle stop, you throw a little undervolt on it and then you dial the wattage down a little bit and you can stay really far away from thermal throttling by a landslide by 20 to 25 degrees Celsius sometimes on the CPU, that is pretty acceptable, but we have to tune that ourselves, right? So while that might not be a feasible option for you, you have to consider everything else that makes this laptop great, take a look at the price, and then decide from there. But many people will be focused on thermal performance. And Clevo, if you're listening, if you can improve on that while still keeping this at a budget-friendly price per the spec, you're going to sell a lot of them. All right, folks, that's going to do it. Hopefully you enjoyed this review of this Clevo chassis. Thank you, ZTech PC. I'm Bob of All Trades, and I'll see you in the next video.